Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. The book of Isaiah, the 51st chapter, beginning with verse 1. And I'm probably going to, probably just going to read through, looks like probably through verse 8. Would you stretch your hands this way one more time and ask the Lord to anoint us today, to let us hear what he has to say. And I thank you, God, for this word of encouragement today to the body of Christ. Somebody say amen. Let's read Isaiah chapter 51. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a lot of the people. My righteousness is near. My salvation is gone forth. And mine arms shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me. Hallelujah. And mine arms shall they trust. And on my arm, I'm sorry, shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither ye be afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness, look at me church, shall be forever. Hallelujah. And my salvation from generation to generation. The first thing that I want everybody in here to know is it's so simple that a child could preach this message. We are the people of God. You belong to God Almighty. He even said to you today to look unto Him. Where is your faith? Trust in the Lord. Lean not, He said, to your own understanding. What I really liked is when he said to us today that he will comfort Zion. There's not a day that you'll ever come into the house of God and never leave this place different than when you came in. The very minute when we started worshiping God and we got deeper and deeper and the waters began to get deeper and deeper, amen, things already began to change in our lives. God is saying to us today, that there is a vision for this church. There's a vision, the body of Christ. This is what God wants to talk to us about today. The Bible said that God called Abraham alone and He blessed him and, and He increased him. And that's what He's done in your life. And that's what He's done in my life. Gillis was talking today of the importance of the body. We are an important 
you're an important, I'm important to God. Yes, we are an important part of the body of Christ. Without us, this wheel don't move. Without us, and we might just be a little small cog in the wheel, but thank God Almighty, thank God Almighty. Though he said he be little among the thousands of Judea, he said, for out of thee I shall come forth. He said, even he that hath been from everlasting, even from old, There's some things that God wants me to remind us all of. It means so much to me today. And I'm not just saying this because I'm staying in the pulpit, but I'm talking to everybody in here. Every one of you all have a mouth that you can open. Every one of you all have eyes that you can see. Come on, somebody. You've got hands, you've got feet, you've got legs. But even if you don't, you have a mouth and you have eyes. And I want to encourage you because God is talking about let's not lose the vision. Almost 16 years ago when I came here, we were small in number and we've grown. God has moved. We have had revival in different seasons. But the first thing that I want to tell you is that this race that we're in, it's not a sprint. It's about longevity. If there was anybody that understands about longevity, it was Abraham and Sarah. You know, God gave him a promise. He had to wait a long, long time. He waited longer than I preached in the church. He waited probably 19 or 20 years. And God, in his old age, showed up. You remember, and I've seen that biblical movie, and I I thought it was pretty cool because whether it was this way or not, but here he is sitting in the plains of Mamre looking out over the devil, I I mean, sorry, over the desert, and he's been fighting the the devil for who knows how long, and he looks up, and all of a sudden, standing out in the wilderness coming at him, three men just appear, and they're all walking right towards him. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost now. God's not going to let you down, just like He's not going to let Abraham down. He even said, Hearken unto me and give ear, my people, for I will make judgment to rest upon the people. God said in His Word that don't be afraid of people that, 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 that they'll, they'll, they'll criticize and they'll find fault with anything. But I want to tell you today that I didn't come here to criticize. I didn't come here. You didn't come here to find fault. We came here to help the body of Christ. Amen. That's Come on, give Him praise in this house. <coughs> but it's longevity. It's not a sprint. The Bible says you have need of endurance. Every one of you do. You have need of endurance. Josh preached in here the other night. He was talking about the same thing. This race is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's about longevity. I want to encourage you today. I want want to speak to you today. And every time that you come in here, and, and you know you may be in a wilderness, but God said in His Word, and I believe what He's saying, He said, I will comfort my people. I, I will cause her waste places. You know, when I came in here today, I heard the Lord tell me, He said, you know, and I thought, well, why don't you do it, God, after He told me this, but I probably shouldn't have said that. He said, you know, if I wanted to, He said, I could take one finger and flick the devil out into eternity. And I said, why don't you, Lord? Why don't you do that? But He's not, he does, he's not going to do it like that. Unfortunately, we're in a battle. You're in a battle. I'm in a battle. Everybody in here. Everyone in here. You know, and I want to tell you right now, but the greater one lives in us. The greater one is in the body of Christ. And His name is Yeshua. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the one that we worship and love. Come on, somebody. And He's the one that we adore. And He is the one that wants you to know that we are here today. We have a vision. And we have God's got a plan for this church. And this church is not going anywhere, but we're going up with God.
But, but you know, my wife used to always ask me, what's your vision? Well, I, I, I want to go, I can go all the way back. So this is why that I want to preach this message. Not just for me, for every worker in the church, for every person that's ever had anything to do with our church who's come into the church. You've given, you've sown seed, you've worked, uh, uh, you've done great things for God. We, you know, and I remember the day, you know, God said, you know, if you really want to humble yourself before me, clean the church. I still clean the church. I don't care to clean the church. I like to clean the church. Glory to God. If that's what I get to do in glory, be a janitor, so be it. Whatever, whatever God wants us to do. But we'll just all chip in and help each other. Come on, somebody help me preach. Amen. Help me preach in this place. Let's get down to where we live. But you know, the reason that we're here, number one, we're here to preach the truth to you so that you won't die in your sin and go to hell. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? Glory to God. We preach the truth. And had maybe I not preached the truth, we might have a great big congregation right now. There might be a lot of people here right now. Now, I wish I could go back and re sneak some things I'd done. I probably went, when I was young in the Lord, I probably shouldn't have preached about Christmas, but I did. So that might have been one that, that I'm sorry for. But I'm not sorry for preaching on Halloween. And I'm not sorry for telling people not to play the lottery. And I'm not sorry for preaching what God had me to say to the church. Because you know what? It finally got a hold. Even the kids said, we don't want to trick or treat. We'll just go to church and, and we'll just have a service or something. Glory to God. But you know what? People to this very day still fight me over it. But you know what? You'll, you'll know one day when I stand before God that I was telling you the truth. You'll know it. I'm telling you right now, and I'll stand before him, and he'll say, he told you the truth. But I don't want anybody in this church or anybody in, in Greenback or anywhere I go to die and go to hell. Everyone in here under the sound of my voice, uh, me and Josh talking today, there's been enough gospel preached in this church to faith 15 worlds over and over again. Well, glory be to God. Whoa, hallelujah. The devil is defeated today, church. And I get sick and tired when people start nitpicking about kids and nitpicking about uh, the church and saying this and finding fault. That's not what God does. That's what the devil does. So I want you to know also, and it's been a great time because we have helped the body of Christ. All of us have been anointed. Some of you, God used you in the most incredible times to give to our church. And without your giving, we'd never be where we are today. And I want to thank you for that. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Because God sees it as something a whole lot greater than you may see it. And I'm thankful today because you can't outgive our God. You can't outlove our God and you can't outlive our God. But everybody in here, I want you to know that we've, had, we've got a pretty good track record of keeping people alive for a long time. You know why? Because it's my job and Josh's job and Gil's job and your job is number, the second thing I want to say, the third, whatever it is, is to bring people, us, into the presence of God. I want to be in the presence of the Most High God. I don't want to die on the outside. I don't want to be on the outskirts, Brother Harold. I don't want to be out here in the inner court, but I want to move in, somebody. It's time to move in, praise God, to the presence of God, to the Holy of Holy. That's what we're here for, is to bring people in the presence of God and one touch from God. How many people's ever been touched in the service and felt the hand of God and you've been delivered and set free because of the power of God because of his presence well somebody shout amen I feel God <laughs> devil doesn't have a, a, a chance as long as he can keep you but if he can keep you from entering into the presence of God and when you enter into the presence of God let me two things happen it's been on my heart I preached it the last two services number one you'll start to uh, you'll, you'll, you'll start to consume godliness godliness will become part of you you'll become more like him you'll there's just something that'll happen to you. You know, you'll go out with a smile on your face. 
You know, you won't come in the same. You won't leave here the same. Come on, somebody say amen. And that's what this is all about. This is what church is all about. It's not a social gathering to say, oh, uh, uh, have three songs and a little math. No, I want to bring you into the presence of God. I want to see your life change forever. I, I was talking about Janice this lady in my workplace. I remember and Janice will tell you, she, she was in some major trouble when she first came in here. And, and she was wrapped up. The devil tried to destroy her. And I saw God in third, uh, and probably not even 30 seconds to three minutes deliver her from 20 years where the devil tried to destroy her. We had to carry out. She was so drunk. Well, somebody say the power of God is in the house today. It's the presence of God that we need in our life. You don't need just another sermon. You don't need a preacher that's going to tickle your ears. You need somebody that's going to move you closer to God. Look, everybody in here, everybody in here, you've got an assignment with God. Every one of us. Not just a preacher. You want to put it back on me? Everybody wants to put it on me.